A new style of event delivery is emerging now for meetings and live events, especially for chapters within associations. And that's specifically using the Zoom technology. Think it's kind of like Skype, but Zoom is an excellent platform in order to connect many participants, including your main speaker, remotely from other locations. Now, the style of Zoom event that I'm going to be teaching you right now or how to do it on a budget, how to do it yourself, specifically when you have an audience of people located at a common event location and you want them to participate in a Zoom-enabled event and have that information, whether the presenter is local with them or the presenter is remote and there's other people who are looping in by Zoom technology in order to participate in that event, this is how you do it. This is the equipment that you're going to require. So the first piece of equipment that is required when you do a video conferencing type event on a budget is a webcam. The one that we like is the Logitech C930. And the reason for that is it's around $100 only for cost. It is an HD webcam, meaning high definition, so you're gonna get a great video signal out of it. And specifically, the concern in all of these models, because not all webcams are built equally, is the field of view. The degrees on the C930 is 90 degrees that it can see. The C920, Logitech C920 that you find very commonly when you go to a store like Best Buy and it costs around $70 is only 78 degrees. It's a little bit narrower. So depending on the room configuration that you're using this for your audience that you want to participate in the Zoom session, it might not be wide enough depending on how close they are to the camera. The placement of the camera depends on where your presenter is located. If the presenter is local, you want to capture the presenter as well. It might be aimed at them. And they might also have a PowerPoint screen behind them. And the screen is also going to have your remote participants in Zoom appear on it as well if they were asking any questions. The other possibility is where you have a remote presenter. So they're located and they're participating by Zoom from their house. And your group is getting together in a common venue so that you can have the networking and socializing aspect, but you want to aim it at them. The best placement we've found for the webcam is directly above the screen. So this is your screen and it's resting on top. The reasoning for that is the eye contact. You want it so that when people are looking at the screen, which is, has the presenter on it and the information that they're looking at, that it kind of looks like to the remote Zoom participants that they're making eye contact. How do you mount this up there? One idea is to purchase a flexible arm clamp. Here's an example. This is a very inexpensive one, maybe $10 on Amazon. This has different ways of clamping on. Some of them are compression based like a spring. In this case, it's got one that you clamp with a screw device. The other end, there are some that you can buy that specifically work with the Logitech. It has a threaded mount underneath, so I can go and screw this onto here, and then I would have my camera on a clamp. So, I could take the clamp and clamp that to a ceiling tile above, or to the top of the projection screen, or I could put it onto a table in front of, or perhaps a tripod or some kind of light stand that is directly in front of the screen so that again, it looks like the participants are looking directly at the camera. The next part is gonna be your audio source. The audio source is you're gonna need a very good microphone. Now, a very good one out there for excellent audio quality is the Blue Yeti, specifically the USB one, because you're probably gonna be connecting this into a laptop. The Blue Yeti has different patterns that it can listen to in the room configuration, so you can optimize it so that it can listen to the entire crowd, the entire audience that's in there to capture any questions. You would have the placement of this directly in front of the projection screen or in front of your crowd on a table so that it can pick up anybody who's asking any questions in the crowd. Now, of course, this depends on the room size, the room configuration, how many participants you have locally in that room. But, you know, for venues where you have a typical chapter size of, say, 20 to 30 people, it does an excellent job. The next problem you're going to have is your audio source for emitting it, your speaker. So so that they can hear the remote presenter or the remote participants on the Zoom session. There are a variety of speakers that you can buy 
from you know, $10, $20 upwards to $100 or more. You probably don't want to cheap out on this. I would recommend that you do spend money on this to enhance the audio experience of the people in your room. It will give a better dynamic range and it will have just, it'll just sound a lot better basically. These connect in a variety of fashions to your laptop. Some of them are gonna connect by Bluetooth, some of them are gonna connect by USB, and some of them might connect through a typical audio cable. We call that 3.5 millimeters. You want to make it so that this, some of them have a battery in them and then some are connected by an AC adapter. You wanna make sure that it will last for the duration of the entire session. The speaker, is going to be placed again in front of the screen so it sounds like the voice is being projected from the remote speaker to the people in the audience. Now a problem that you will have is that your laptop that's running the Zoom software is typically connected by an HDMI cable over to the projector. Well, a lot of laptops will default to sending the audio signal over that HDMI connection, not just the video, but the audio as well, so that it's being emitted on the projector's speakers, which not all projectors have speakers built in. So you actually have to go into the laptop's configuration and tell it to send the sound out to the remote speaker that you've purchased, an external speaker, and not to the projector itself. So we highly recommend that you test drive this beforehand. All of these components come together are maybe only about $300 in total. So it's great and affordable to create a session where you can have Zoom enable participants either with a local presenter or a remote presenter and of course with local participants that are joining into your session. Last but not least, you're going to have a problem with the placement of the webcam and of the microphone because they are USB. The cable that comes with them is not long enough to reach where your laptop is located, especially if you're placing the webcam directly above the projection screen. So now you have to buy USB extension cable. A USB extension cables can cause a problem because if you buy a very cheap one, meaning it's kind of thin cable, it's a thin gauge, it won't be able to carry the signal out to the webcam or the microphone which require power to also be run over those cables and they might not work. You won't actually see them. The signal will be lost when you're running the Zoom session. So again, make sure you test this in advance and purchase higher quality, specifically a USB 3.0 extension cables that are of good length, you know, perhaps in 10 foot segments, and you wanna make sure that it actually can recognize those devices when you're running your Zoom software. So these are all the components that you would use in order to enable what we call a Zoom enabled event for your meetings or you know, at your local gathering in order to allow remote presenters and participants be part of your event. The last component that you might need uh, coming to mind is a USB hub because a lot of laptops don't have enough USB inputs in order to connect the microphone and the webcam and any other devices that you need. So in this situation you will need a USB hub. Now USB hubs, you have to be careful that you buy the right one. You would be a USB 3.0 hub and I specifically would recommend you get one that is USB powered hub. And the reason for that is because of the signal issue that, again that you're going to have in powering these remote devices over a USB extension cable getting to the webcam and the microphone placement compared to where the laptop is located. So Zoom enabled events are a great way to save on travel costs, uh, to increase your participation because you can have people participating from remote locations and also to get some very high caliber speakers and remote presenters provide information to your local gathering whether it's your chapter or your organization. So it's something seriously that you should consider if you haven't explored it yet.